Hmm. Whoa. Well, you turn to the next book. It's called the book called Psalms. We call Zabur in Arabia. Let's look and see what happens. If we go to chapter 2, let's just go to chapter 2 and see what it says in verse 7. Now, the Psalms, everybody knows these are the Psalms of David. David was the great king. We say Dawood, peace be upon him. And he used to address the congregation. Kind of like the president, State of the Union. State of the Union, sorry. I say onion because it always makes me cry and it smells funny. But anyway, it's not that subject right now. David is addressing the congregation and he's telling them. I'm surprised you guys in Australia know that joke. That's pretty funny. But anyway, he says, chapter 2, verse 7, he says, I declare, David says, I declare the decree that my Lord has said to me. You are my son, today I have begotten you. Who? David is the son of God. And he's begotten. Well, now I went again to the preacher. I said, well, what about this? What, what do I make out of that? He said, again, you see, that's a big S, right? I said, yeah. He said, he's talking about Jesus. It's a prediction of Jesus' is coming. I said, no. He says, today, right now, today, there it is. Today I have begotten you. Today I begot you. He said, yes, that was the day he was begotten, but then he was born later. I said, what? <laughs> they referred me right away. They said, look, just go right over to the New Testament. Look it up. It's in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And by the way, I just showed you that one. That's the one they translated to Arabic. Verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever's mentioned in chapter 2, verse 7 right here has to be the one because it says begotten. That's the only other place there's a begotten son in the Bible, in case you didn't know that. 1,200 pages, I checked them out. Only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, there's got a lot of problems with that. Got a lot of problems in that. First of all, it says God loved the world. Well, if he loved it, why did he let there be corruption in it? We don't have that belief in Islam. In fact, we know in Islam Allah is not in love with this world, not at all. The thing that he loves is a believer who sacrifices himself, meaning that he gives his life here to serve others in the best possible way. That's what he loves. A good heart. A kind person. Believes in Allah does righteous deeds but as far as this world this isn't this isn't our paradise but I'm not going to break it down too much and the next thing it said he gave his only begotten son that's only you got only with that you got begotten begotten is David but look at the rest of it because if they believe in him they're not going to die according to them Jesus died it means he didn't believe it either Well, and how many preachers preached that word and they died too? That means you can't take it literal. Whatever was meant or intended there cannot be taken literal. We'll all agree on that because that's what the preacher told me. So we can't take it literal. Okay, we won't take it literal. Last point. Book, chapter called Luke, the third gospel, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 23. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at the age of 30. He was the son of Joseph, the son of... He Wait a minute. Jesus was the son of Joseph. Now the translators in English added the brackets and said, you know, in parentheses, as was supposed. The son of Joseph, the son of Heli. Now the problem here is in Matthew it says that Jesus is the son of Joseph who's the son of Jacob. So Joseph had two fathers. Oh, I don't know what you mean by that. Fathers. 
Matthew's real clear to tell you there's only 42 generations all the way back to David, uh, to uh, Abraham. 42 generations. But here I counted them, there's 57 generations. And they got different fathers, and then the same, and then the different ones again. But what's really cool, and I'm just going to go to the end of this, the last two verses, chapter 3 of the book of Luke, listen. They're giving the long line, the son of, the son of, the son of. This is Jesus' father's. The son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, which we call Idris, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalahal, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, and Seth is the son of Adam, and Adam is the son of God. Huh? Adam is the son of God. And when I took it to my preacher friend again, I said, look, Adam is the son of God. He said, look at it, it's a little s. <laughs> Allah Akbar. Before I go to the Quran, I have to read this verse to you so that so we're gonna well, we're gonna say something amazing statement here. It's gonna be an amazing statement, I'm gonna give you just in a minute. I got to go to a book in here called the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 19. Write it down, verse 19 in chapter 23. I'm going to read it for you. Does God have sons? Is God a son? Does God have any children? Let's see what it says. And this is the Bible that I took out of the hotel room, and it says it right here. God is not a man. That he should lie. Nor is God the son of man. That he should repent. God is not a man. God is not the son of man. Jesus said he was the son of man. In fact, if you go to the book of Ezekiel, you'll find in Ezekiel every single chapter, except about four or five out of all these chapters, start out by God telling the prophet, calling him the son of man. Say, O son of man. Chapter 17, I just turned to that one. It says, son of man, pose a riddle and speak a parable to the house of Israel. Son of man, turn your face. Son of man, prophesy, son of man. He's calling Ezekiel son of man. Means what? A prophet. That's a term for prophets. Descendants of Adam. Benny Adam. We're all Benny Adam. Sons of Adam. Bible said, God's not a man. Not the son of man. Let's see what the Quran says. This is the book. It says there is no doubt about it. Let's see what it says. A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Qul. Huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid. Wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. Say, he is Allah, the uniquely one. Allah, the self-sufficient, eternally sought after by his creation. He does not beget. He doesn't have any offspring. And he is not begotten. He's not the son of anything. And there is nothing equal or comparable to him. He is unique. They both said the same thing. But the preachers are the ones who said something different. The books, as a matter of fact, astounded me. And you don't know how many nights in the last 14 years I sat with these two books side by side going over and over them in the Arabic and the English for the Quran and in the Kone Greek because I don't know 
the Aramaic language. I don't even know what it looks like. I've only seen it in pictures. But I did use this, the English, and I have at least a dozen translations. And what I came to realize just last year, an amazing thing, put my heart at total peace in how to explain this to a Christian. Or a Jew. There isn't anything different about these two books. Nothing at all except one thing. These two books are exactly the same except where one of them keeps contradicting itself. But where it doesn't contradict itself, it says exactly what this book says. This book said, if it were from other than the law, it would contain many contradictions. If you have a choice between a pure glass of water and something murky, dirty looking, and smells funny, which would you drink from? I'm going to let it end with that. I've enjoyed being here. This is an amazing opportunity for me to come to Australia. Oh, I didn't say it right. I'm sorry. Australia. <laughs> and we ate from the Barbie. Whatever that is. I'm glad to be here with all of my brothers and sisters. And I'm very happy for this opportunity to serve Allah, I hope he'll accept it from me. If there was any good in this program tonight, it was from Allah. The mistakes are from me. I just ask you to be patient with me while I'm learning. Pray for me that I'll do better next time. And we hope that Allah will guide the people. We have no problem with our Christian and Jewish brothers and sisters. We hope Allah will guide them. Because when Allah guides them, they'll probably be better than us. And we'll pray for them in a very beautiful way. And if anybody likes this prayer, all you got to do is say, I mean, afterwards. And the prayer goes like this. May Allah guide you to the very best. May He grant you the best in this life and the best in the next life. May He enrich you in every possible way and put you on the truth.